there are various ways of storing data. We already saw the lists, which are square brackets with just some numbers, for example, or also strings within such square brackets, and this is then one list. Now there's another type of list that is commonly used and has a couple of advantages, and here I will introduce what kind of list this is. So this list is actually called a dictionary. So this is why as a variable I now choose dict here and then I assign this. And these dictionaries have um, curly brackets, so they look like that. And I insert a blank line, so this will just make the code I am going to um, show you now a little bit more readable. And within this code, uh, within this list, within this dictionary, we always have key value pairs. So the key is a name. For example, well, let's call it name. And this is a string, as you can see. And then this is followed by a colon, and then here's a value. So for example, this value could be 5. Um, this value can also be a list. For example, this could be names. So for example, maybe Dominic, um, then Claudia, Claudia, then Chantal, and then Mark. So this would be four, or well, this would be one value, and this value in this case is an entire list. So that's perfectly fine. This must be followed by a comma, and then I could make another key value pair. So key should be height in this case, followed by a colon, and again a list here, maybe 190 centimeters, a large Claudia of 192, a uh, Chantal with maybe 172, and Mark with 181. And I might want to make a comment here that um, this is in centimeters. So this is a little bit more easier to read than height. So there's a T missing. And this then is one dictionary. So I might give this dictionary, I number this a little bit maybe, and I, well, dict also is a command, so this is why it's green, and so I shouldn't use this as a variable name. So if I then run dict1, have a look at it, uh, I didn't run this one, so I should run and I get exactly what I put in here. So that's fine. So this kind of, first we, we look have a look at the structure. So this stru structure looks very much actually like a data table. For example, a pandas data table. In this case, this would be the category name and this would be the column. So this would be all the names within a column. This would be then a second column, the category name of the column, and these are all the values within this column. So if you transpose this, sort of, you get a table. And we can have, we can actually put this into a data frame. So we import pandas as pd, run the code, have maybe a new cell so we don't run this again, make a data frame, so pandas data frame. So we make a data frame out of this dictionary one. And then I run it. And as you can see, this is the data frame, and it really looks like, well, it is a table. So this is name, all these names, here the height, all these heights. So this is how these dictionaries look like. It is then also possible to nest these kind of dictionaries, which can be quite helpful. So I make another cell here and have a second dictionary, which I, again, curly brackets, again, um, with an additional line, so for better readability. And I put in, say, the same names here, comma, and then I have something new. I have something I call body parameters, colon. And now this body parameters shall be another dictionary, so another curly brackets here. And then I put in the height as the first entry within this dictionary comma, then a second body parameter, say weight, and 
Um, let's be a little bit nice here, say maybe 94 for the first one, then um, 89, um, but it's larger, so let's maybe 92. And 71 for Chantal and Mark likes to eat cake, so 105. Then I can add a third entry within this additional dictionary, for example, the eye color. And here I only want to make three entries. So let's say blue, um, green, and brown. And that's not a problem. So I can have this kind of nested dictionary here. So if I run this and want to have a look at it, of course, it looks exactly the same here. It's more difficult to put this in a data frame, but I have, can have these nested things. So now I want to access these data or this, this um, small database of names and body parameters. And I can do this by using the names of the, the keys here. So again, these are keys, these are the values. So I can access it by using the keys. So dict two and then square brackets. And I want to um, get the names, for example, names. I run it and I get all the names. Okay. Then body parameters and I get of course, all the body parameters here. You can see this is already one individual table here. So I stored one table within another table. No problem. Maybe I want to extract um, the weight from this. So I add here, oops, I add here another square bracket and extract the weight. Now I get all the weights. But that's quite of convenient here. And then maybe I want to get a second entry. So this is again 0, 1, 2, 3. So the second entry in fact is a 1, put in 1, and I get 92. So this is a very convenient way of structuring this. And one advantage of this kind of um, dictionaries is that maybe I have another dictionary that looks more or less the same like this. Uh, let's put it maybe here underneath this. Let's call this 2b. But um, in the second dictionary, I'm missing a couple of entries. For example, I don't have weights. So what I can do is I can just delete the entire weight entry here. That's not a problem. So I can run this. So that's fine. Weight is missing, but, um, but it's still a dictionary entry without props. The advantage is here, if it were a table, just like up here table, and there would be a weight entry and would have a second one, um, very often I maybe need this additional column in here, something like this, or maybe I'm combining two tables, or whatever, and then I have a column which I, which is always there. But within a dictionary, I can very easily just remove basically one entry and only at those entries that I want. So this makes things much more compact. And this, of course, will still work, but not with weight because it's not there, but I could use height. It's just looking for what is, I should run this and call it 2B, importantly. So it's only looking for what's in there. So if weight is not in there, it's, of course, not a problem. So. I think you're getting the point. It's a very convenient way of structuring some data. And finally, just to illustrate, I make a third dictionary. And within this dictionary, we have something different, Let's say, for example, animal. Um, and we have cat here, and I need a comma. And then we have name. name and it shall be called furball and we have vaccinated and say here true so we can also make true and false then maybe born in 2022 um, colon 2002 
and finally legs oh, it's a healthy cat so it's four legs so that's fine so i can mix um, various data formats like string boolean so true or false and numbers and if i run this of course i hope you already saw this i should get a couple of error messages so the first one is born 20 22nd um, and the problem here is it already says so perhaps you forgot a comma so reading through the errors is usually very helpful so this is the comma here i run it get another one here it says vaccine is not defined because it's a variable but it needs to be a string because the keys always need to be strings the values and then run it again and now it should be fine yes it is so keys always need to be strings and the values can be strings boolean numbers or whatever so this is quite fine and always it also can be just one entry for a value or it can be a list of entries um, you can put the categories in you want this can change even the actually even the um, sequence doesn't matter so it would be possible for example let me show this as one last example here it would be possible to have this dictionary like that um, let's call this a four and then i have uh, let's call this four a and this four b and um, in here i switch these entries here so this is not the first entry but the second entry and if i'm then looking for in dict for a for name i will get the uh, all right what did i do wrong oh these are both called for b this will not work i guess so if i put in for a name it's fine if i extract it from for b it's fine because it just looks for name the sequence doesn't matter so this is quite helpful now this format is also called well it's a dictionary but this is also a json format and json format um, is very often used for databases so if you ever want to access a database the retrieved data are very often in a json format so in this dictionary format this is why it's very helpful and important to know this kind of format